Hey, everybody, this is Scoots. This is a new kind of uh, experimental uh, version of Sleep With Me we've never done before. So welcome. These are just bedtime stories from our podcast, Sleep With Me. And make them feel fresh. These ones are from a couple years ago. Uh, so, so, so if you're a regular listener, you might get a refresh. And if you're new, these are just bedtime stories uh, from a show called Sleep With Me. They're strange, they're meandering, they're a little bit different. And all this is made possible by listeners like you, regular listeners like you. And so I just want to let you know, that's how we're able to put the show out. And uh, so if you uh, are a fan of Sleep With Me, you listen to it on a regular basis, please consider supporting the show. You get ad-free episodes, you get ad-free story-only episodes, tons of other cool stuff at Sleep With Me Plus. That's sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. But if you're in a position and you have some money every month or you say, hey, maybe I don't watch that streaming service, I'd rather give it to a podcast. Think about your favorite podcast. It doesn't have to be Sleep With Me and support that podcast. If it is Sleep With Me, I can support the show, be great. But if it isn't or there's a podcast you listen to, way more, brings you a lot of value during the day. Please support that podcast. Podcast is going through a different time right now. And your favorite podcast, uh, the one you get the most out of, uh, could use your support the most. Uh, so consider supporting it however they request support. Uh, just check it out, like listen to the show or check out their website. Or consider supporting Sleep With Me. If the if Sleep With Me, you say, oh, no, Sleep With Me is the one I listen to the most. Uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. Thanks. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and jo- 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 journalmen, uh, boys and girls, it's time for the podcaster who can't say words, uh, you know, clearly all the time. And I just had like a, prompt, a, a pecan popped in my brain. You say pecan, I say pecan. Pecan, pecan pie, pecan pie, nuclear. But, uh, you know, whatever the pie you prefer is, uh, I hope uh, that, 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 that as I get confused, that it's time for podcasts to put you to sleep. It's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. Thanks, everybody. Hey, everybody, this is Scoots. This is a quick message here. Uh, if you get a lot out of Sleep With Me, if you're a regular listener, you like these new things we're trying out, like the story-only version of the show. If you're new, don't worry about any of this. But if you're a regular listener of Sleep With Me or you're a regular listener of any podcast, if you have a favorite podcast uh, and it's not Sleep With Me, that's totally cool. If you have podcasts you listen to way more or you get way more value out of, I totally understand that. Consider supporting that podcast. Uh, podcasting is an industry is kind of going through a weird phase right now. It's direct support from listeners is going to be, it seems like it's going to be the future of most shows. And so consider supporting the podcast you really love, and uh, you could do that. You could find out. You could listen, listen to the show, and see how they ask to be supported, um, and or reach out to them. And say, hey, how can I support you? Or if you can't afford, uh, you know, a few dollars a month, you say, hey, how else can I support you? But if Sleep with Me is the one, you, Sleep with Me Plus is the best way to support Sleep with Me. Sign up for Sleep with Me Plus. Not only you get an unbelievable, sweet, different ways to listen to the show. But it's a huge help uh, for us to be able to do stuff like this. Uh, But yeah, think about what your favorite podcast is and then go ahead and go to their website or or if you already know how how they like to be supported, support that show. Uh, Thanks and good night. Hello, 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 everybody. This is your friend Ray, your neighbor Ray here. So good to be back in your ears. I think it's been a while. Uh, When I'm recording this, an episode of mine is just about to come out from the holidays of 2019, but it's coming out in 2021. And I'm fascinated by the production process here because Scooter said, Ray, I need you to record an episode for the spring of uh, 2021. And I have some notes and we did some research. He gave me an overview and it was an episode idea we've been discussing for maybe a four or five months already. And, uh, I said, okay, Scooter. And actually we were supposed to record it uh, at some other point And we recorded one you'll hear in June already. How about that? Future Ray comes from the past before me. And there was something else about the process. I should introduce myself. I'm I'm Scooter's neighbor, Ray. I'm your friend, Ray. I'd like to be a friend if you're new here. And I'm a, uh, 
I've been Scooter's neighbor two times, maybe a, th- maybe a third time, because I knew Scooter's considering moving. And I said, well, Scooter, I, I'll, I don't know, like, uh, and, you know, I, I'm having st- strong feelings about it. Uh, and Scooter's eased me into it, because probably if he was playing his cards, he would have moved already. But he said, well, one transition at a time. We got a new school in August, uh, that we're, you know, we're all adjusting to now, you know, me and Scooter less so than, uh, uh, my favorite person in the world there. And, and then, you know, say, okay, well, it's a little bit far. So what if we moved a little bit closer there? That's what Scooter's saying. And I'm saying, holy moly, but this is the benefit of being a renter. So, Oh boy, I guess I went off topic. Maybe when you listen to this, we moved. Also, oh, the other thing I said is Scooter. I don't know if that's actually the spring because he said the episode would come out in the spring, probably March. And I said, I don't know if March is the spring, Scooter, or the winter. April showers bring May flowers. And he said, well, Ray, thank you. And I said, Scooter, you're so funny. And so, yeah, so we're going to talk about some places that I went swimming and wading with Scooter in Florida, of all places. Now, not in Orlando. I don't think, I don't think we went, we'll do anything in Orlando because this is about uh, swimming in Florida, but particularly in a, a region of Florida near where his family lives. Uh, So Pasco County, Hernando County, and probably a few counties. Sorry to the other counties there that I don't know your names. I know Hernando. I know Pasco. Scooter, is there Redondo? No, that's Redondo's in L.A. I know there's other counties that I'm missing because they all come around there. You cross over in Pasco. You're in Hernando. And there's another one that I just can't remember. I'm sorry, other county. I, I love your area. I just don't know. I just don't know that, you know, I don't live there. So I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't even know when I'm riding over. Well, actually, I know when I'm riding over the Pasco and Nando County lines. Uh, just because uh, I do, because we're around, I think we're around County Road, which is interesting because around, or oh, maybe that's one of the borders of the county. I didn't even realize it. Or is that commercial way? I don't know. So anyway, we're talking about some places I went swimming with Scooter. And the idea of the episode is to talk. Now, if you have any water things, you might not want to listen to this episode. Oh, it's talking about myself and how, who I am. Who, what, why, where, when. Scooter always says, Ray, cover those, please. So I'm Scooter's neighbor, Ray. And we're friends. Uh, it was, you know, he's, he's not an easy person to become friends with. I always talk about that. It took some persistence. And, you know, he still doesn't. Bl- he said, how do I end up with a friend like you? And I said, uh, you, you know, I, I laughed at that one. It was so easy. I said, Scooter, you teed me up. You ain't never had a friend like Ray. And he said, well, and I said, Scooter, you've never. And he said, no, I have not, Ray. You're wonderful. Scooter calls me the most well-adjusted person, which is a compliment. And I say, Scooter, I just look at life and I say, well, isn't that wonderful? I'm not a hundred percent. You know, I see then, you know, I see those other things too. And they, they affect me. And I talk about them in private, you know, in the podcast, I'm here to put you to sleep. But for the most part, I say, well, isn't that nice? Uh, this is an opportunity. You know, those kind of things, I don't just say them. I, I walk them or I swim them. So I'm Scooter's neighbor, Ray. Who, what, what we're going to be talking about tonight is going swimming or some swimming-based areas. Because Scooter loves swimming, one, he loves water, and he he actually wants to expand on this, uh, and he he was listening to someone else's conversation too, and he said, "Holy cow, this person is doing what I dream of." And I know we covered this once a few years ago. I think we did an episode about it, uh, but I'm not even sure about that. Uh, about one of the bodies of water we're going to be covering. But there's a, a few different ones, two in particular we want to make sure we get to. And then we'll see what, oh no, three, I guess. Uh, 
So, okay, so we'll try to cover them all. And this was not even that ambitious because Scooter would have liked to. So we swam in four places in particular, four unique bodies of water. Who, what, where? Where? In Florida, in the bodies of water, which I don't know if we'll cover swimming pools, but we did go in a swimming pool in a hot tub uh, by, you know, where his parents live. We, we swam in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, and then we swam in, uh, a, a, a lake, a spring fed manufactured lake, and then, uh, a spring and a little miniature water park, uh, uh surrounding it. Uh, when it, this was in, uh, this was a while back, uh, and it was in the summertime. So talk about a good time to go swimming. In Florida, you want to be by the water, of course, uh, staying cool, and it's a good time to swim. And but maybe there's better time. Maybe even the spring, when you're listening to this in Florida, may be a better time to swim. But I don't know. I mean, I have swam in Florida. I've been to Florida in the spring. I just don't. I didn't do a pod, podcast. I mean, I maybe did podcast episode about it, but, but I don't remember if we did it or not. When I went on a kayak ride with Scoot and his brothers uh, in this same spring, which was the first place we'll cover, which is called Wikiwachi. And it's in, uh, I think it's in Wikiwachi, Florida, but it's on the border of Spring Hill, Florida. And it has a pretty storied, long history which I'll get out my iPad and kind of go over a little bit, but I want to talk about our history with it first. Well, maybe we'll cover, yeah, Scooter said, let's cover the history at the end of the episode, so the bottom third of the episode. So, okay, so that's fair enough. Thank you, Scooter. So, okay, so we headed here one day. Now, I should talk about our previous history. We have a history with Wikiwachi. And also, you know, uh, Scooter had a history of uh, this trip of not being happy about some communication issues. But again, it was, uh, you know, these things happen. And, and, you know, to Scooter, he needs to take care of some of these things before he goes to Florida and figure them out. Uh, because, he, you know, on the day of, you're never going to figure anything out, especially with him, because if he gets out under the collar, he tends to not think straight, as we all do. Okay, so Wikiwatch is a place, it's a tourist attraction. It is a roadside attraction because it's on the side of a road there in Florida built around a natural spring. I don't know any of the history off the top of my head at all other than these things. It's most famous for its mermaid show, though I would say it should be more famous for its spring because the spring, no, I love the mermaids, uh, and we talked to a few of them, very nice. Uh, they took pictures with Scooter's young one uh, and his mother, but it was uh, the spring at Wikiwachi is really mother, that's mother, Na- mother Nature's mermaid tale. And this trip, we did not see the Mermaid Show. But the Mermaid Show has mermaid f- performers. I think sometimes it even has mermen. And it's a, it's been a show that's been going on for years and years and years. And it's human beings portraying mermaids, uh, but in a very inventive way, in an underwater theater on the spring. And I think the shows still do very well. And when you pay to go into the Wikiwachi Park, you pay, you can get access to the mermaid shows, but also to the spring, which is what, what we're really here to cover. And I know Scooter gets confused about zoos, even though these are humans performing. I think maybe he has some sort of zoo thing with the mermaids, even though it's humans being mermaids. So maybe that's why he didn't want to cut. I mean, we didn't go to see the show because Scooter was more interested in swimming. And I, I guess I was with him. It was warm in Florida. We got there around when the park opened because Scooter had kind of planned things out. And when he's planning, like me, I said, when the park opens, you want to be there when it opens. 
Okay, so they also have uh, a boat ride. I don't know if it's a glass bottom boat ride, and I don't think it was operating at the time we went, but these are things we did in the past with Scooter's family. And I think they have a couple places to eat, uh, but they also have, I think it's called the Buccaneer Bay Water Park built on the spring. Now, when I say water park, don't get carried away. You know, we're theme park fans. But I would say do get carried away. And I also want to say if anybody is listening uh, that has any professional involvement with the the, uh, the uh, operations of this park when we went there, I've Scooter and I had to stop a few different times because we were so impressed with the young people and the, the adults working running this park, both Wikiwachi and the Tabuccaneer Bay Water Park. Like the staff training was breathtaking. And when you think about how things have changed at other <laughs> locations where you get service, because, you know, it's because of the high rups, like, uh, and then everybody down, you say, hey, this is about uh, making it a good experience for the people that work here and for the guests. And these were, you know, you know, teenagers, I believe, like college age kids. Uh, and they were doing a uh, wonderful, holy moly, what a job. I didn't even have that as a note, so I'm gl- so glad I did not miss it. And again, like if you're listening to this and you say, well, hopefully it's still the same people are still managing things because uh, they deserve some applause, particularly at this time when there was a lot of short staffing at other places. And I don't know what they're doing right, but all I know is they're doing something right. Okay, so we got to Wikiwachi, and we did go our separate ways because Scooter wanted, and his daughter and I wanted to go to the Buccaneer Bay Water Park. And his mother and his father were going to go to the Mermaid Show and hang around the, 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 par, the rest of the Wikiwachi. Now, Scooter did want to join the Friends of Wikiwachi, he wanted to get a bench made, for, like a dedicated bench to the Sleep With Me listeners that have visited the beyond and become a member of the Friends of Wikiwachi. Now, this was the only place where there was some short staffing because I think that's a volunteer program run in parallel with the admission there. So he couldn't get a g- grasp of uh, the community. There was just a communications difficulty with uh because Scooter said, well, if I sign up, do we go, we can get into the park, right? And I want to do this bench. And they said, what? Yeah, fill out this form and mail a check. So that was like a little bit of troublesome for Scooter to get into the park at first. So we just paid. Uh, so you, when you go in, you go in through, kind of through some old school entrance and then people greet you. I don't think we got a map, and maybe they didn't have maps at this time. And then you go off to the water park, which is to the right, where the spring comes out from the ground. At least to me, amateur, I'm no, you know, I'm no expert. Is where you're on the back side of the theater, and then you go to the left to go to the theater. So we went our separate ways, and you go along a path there, and then you start to hear kind of the music, you know, like popular music playing over the loudspeakers. And you see a beach, which is, you know, manufactured beach. I think the beach is raised up from the spring. But there's a few ways to get into the spring. And you could see the theater. Sometimes you could see the mermaids getting ready for a show. Even though they're kind of hidden, they have a little tent there. And you could see the bubbles. And actually, when we were doing our research, we read that, you know, at different times of low flow for the spring, people have explored it. And this may be the largest uh, system in the United States, maybe even. I don't I don't know. But so this, oh, when I say, oh, okay, so water park. Now, it's not a grand water park for, for, for those of you that are getting this idea in your head of something gigantic. It's more like one of those ones you see with two water slides and like a public area to swim. I guess it's not public because you got to pay to get in. And then a lazy river that is actually just floating in the spring. And they have a beach. I think they even have chairs and then they have some grassy areas. And they have one or two other water slides that look like they've been closed down for a little while. 
But so uh, we got a spot on a grassy area there. We put on a screen, a second layer screen. And from what, what I'm remembering, I think at this time there was only one water slide operating. But maybe there was two. I don't know. Scooter's shrugging his shoulders as well. And thinking that probably there's only one water slide. The first time we went, there was two water slides running. And I think at one time, maybe they had three or four water slides. But the beauty is that the one water slide that was operating goes right into the spring. Also, you do have to get a wristband to rent a tube to go tubing in the um, spring. And the last time we went, which was a few years ago, we were unable to get wristbands. Now, you don't get to go very far in the spring, like on a trip where we went all the way down the Wikiwachi. This is just a short thing. Oh, also, they have a jumping platform right in the middle of the spring. Now, a few things about this water is it's always flowing from the, deep in the earth. Uh, because it was hot out, it was nice to have spring-fed water just because, it, like, uh, it wasn't freezing cold, but it was a, definitely a relief. And there's just something about it. Now, maybe it's mental or maybe it's physical where you say, holy moly, this is some spring water. And uh, you feel it on your skin, and I don't know, you feel good, you feel, uh, you feel invigorated. Okay, so we went there. And I, I don't remember the first thing we did. I think the first thing we did do was go in the spring. Uh, so we got out, we paid for our wristbands, which is a little bit of upcharge. But, you know, no big deal. And we got our wristbands, and then we headed uh, to the... So you get your tube at one spot. And again, you get exposed. to Everybody's trying to have, make sure everybody had a good time and be professional. And then you head down to like this one part of the spring where you get in and they help you get on your tube and then they give you a little push. But because the spring is going, uh, you got you can do that. Now, a couple things we learned, you're not allowed to get off your, your tube. So that's one thing to remember if you're doing it is you got to stay on your tube the whole time, which is tempting to get, you know, want to get off and swim around. And I don't know why, but, you know, that's the rules. So you got to stay on your tube, usually on your tube on your back there. Now you're moving at a very slow, lazy river pace. But meanwhile, when you get pushed off on your left, if you if you want to picture this in your mind, so there you are, you go down on a little beachy area and you step into this water. Now, on your left is, you know, like uh, those ropes, to, you know, with the pontoons or whatever. And on the other side of that is actually the mermaid lagoon area. Though at a little bit of distance, and I think that's probably what I would consider the heart of the spring because it looks like a way you could look down and, and see uh, that it uh, looks like that's where the spring is coming up from the earth. And so that's on your left. On your right is the public, the swimming area. And so everybody's there swimming and wading. And then as you get in your tube, you're going, passing the swimming area on your right. You're also passing the... Uh, the platform, like a dock that you could just jump off of into the deepest spring water. And uh, so there's a lot of noise of joy in swimming and families, a lot of families here. It was very busy, but not too busy, but almost too busy. But we got there at the start of the day. And just jumping into the spring water, I'll tell you, is amazing, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So you're there in your spring. Now, as you pass, as you, so then you start to curve to the right behind the dock. And on your left is bushes and things. And the actual, the rest of Wikiwachi Park is up uh, on a little bit of a hill above you. And so it's kind of cool that there's a little bit. Now, you do have to pay attention because you, get, you don't want to bump into the whatever, the, the bushes and stuff. But uh, Sco Scooter kind of, like, tries to let himself flow, but then he doesn't want to have contact with strangers, you know. So, but but uh, it's just nice, and it's a nice to have a little bit of feeling of nature. Then you go along, you're still passing the swimming area on your right. Then you come in, kind of come into, like, a river flowing where the, you know, 
where the spring starts to flow. And you uh, have more kind of natural area on your left and on your right. And I think you see a picnic area that they have. And you can see fishy poos and, gra- you know, grasses and sandy bottoms and, and all those things. And then you kind of curve back to the right again. And I think there's probably like a rope again to keep you from flowing down the Wikiwachi. And then there's some uh, helpers there, goddess of life, you know. And they say, okay, come on in. And they take you to these stairs and they help you get out of your tube. And then you take your tube, you go up the stairs and you get out of the spring. And then you turn your tube in. And then it's also, you could keep your tube or you turn it in. And even the people taking the tubes were really friendly. Like Scooter even had a conversation with one of them and said something nice. And I said, is this, I said, who am I with here? What in the name of the spring is happening? Is the spring getting your brain scooter? Making you friendly. So we went on the spring. We probably did that three or four times over the course of the day. Now, after you get out of the spring is actually, after you turn in your tube, you're right at the structure for the water slides. And again, I think only one water slide was running out of three or four possible ones, but I think one or two of them aren't even built anymore. So then you get in line, and this is a wooden structure. You know, it's got a lot of water dripping, so you got to be, re- you know, you got to be expecting. Uh, these are things that are outside of Scooter's comfort zone, like dripping water that touches other people. That's not his thing. But, he, you know, he rolls with it. Uh, so you wait in line there. And uh, the lines were not too bad, and it was moving very well. But this is the best part about it, is that you go on the water slide. And this one was a curvy one, like with two, like uh, no pad or anything. You're lying down. But this water slide ends in the, in, in the, in the spring, in, in a, like, a, like they do have people watching, so don't worry. But, but you should probably have like prior ability to swim, you know. But uh, you go right into the spring, and it's just, uh, it's, it's uh, like uh, vigorous is not the right word, but that's the word that came into my brain. And just refreshing and fun. And then you could swim a little bit, and then that's normally what you would do is either go and get, get back in line or you jump off the, uh, the dock for a while. And it's fun to jump off the dock because it's deep, you know, probably like a little bit deeper, but also, you know, you can, uh, I don't know, you get to get to swim in the spring with your eyes open. And I don't know, again, Scooter's love of the water and of spring water is a bit contagious. And so that was about it. I mean, we, we just enjoyed kind of hanging out there. And uh, there's not a lot of downtime when you're with Scooter. And a young one, you know, a teen or whatever, you want to go, go, go. But we ate our lunch there with Scooter's family. And it was pretty good. I think, you know, it was very theme parky type of burgers and uh, chicken sticks or whatever. But it was quite pleasurable, I, I would say. So we did that. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything else we did there. I mean, we spent the day there, and we took a couple trips, you know. I think Scooter's mom really wanted him and his daughter to go to the mermaid show. But they were like, you know, when you're frolicking in spring water, it is very tough. Now, Scooter also wanted to do a tufa, which I think we did. I think we did it because we all had, he had his, uh, we all had bathing suits on. But this may have been another day, but I'll just tell it to you now. And again, Scooter's also location scouting for his brother, who was coming later with the, his wife and his young son. And his Scooter said, well, I got to make sure to find another spot publicly accessible that they could swim in the spring, even without going into this park. And I think the, this park, I think it had, I don't know if it was named after someone, if it was just called the county something, but I think I, uh, we have it We have it looked up, so we'll do it in the research. But this is all the way at the end of the spring. Now, this is actually this, this park across the, the uh, 
Wikiwachi from the park is where we caught, uh, uh, where we caught, where we parked our car a long time ago, whatever, five years ago, where we parked our car and then got our shuttle to take our, in our kayaks to take our kayaks down the Wikiwachi. But across the canal or the, 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 the spring river, uh, I guess it's a river. It's because you know, it writes, uh, is it the Wikiwachi River? I don't know. But so across the river from that is a little park, a public park. It had a food truck even, and we drove in there. We did find a parking spot, but it was pretty busy. And it's a small, small park with just a little beach. Or well, Scooter doesn't even know if there was a beach, maybe. But there's water access for swimming and wading, mostly wading. And it has a lot of shallow water. So if you are there with a little one, perfect. But if you if you just need a, a taste of the spring, I mean, not an actual taste, you know, this is a great place to do it. Uh, and we suspect, though I don't think, I can't find any notes that say we, we continued to go to the Gulf of Mexico here. But there is a park uh, further down, I don't know if it is down the Wikiwachi, but further along in, in this area where you can swim on the Gulf of Mexico. Now, not Scooter's favorite place to swim in the Gulf of Mexico. He said the food place is good and his parents love eating there. And it is a county or state park, but uh, Scooter said it's just uh, like at the intersection of... Uh, you know, whether it's a wiki-watchy or something else. And and so it's, uh, he said it's a different than what you'd expect. It's more of a swampy a access to the Gulf uh, than a Gulf beach. Uh, so he said it's a little bit different swimming because you can't really get to like, uh, you have to wade very far out to go swimming. Like the, it's a shallow, I think, from sediment coming out of the uh, the the rivers in the, like the wetlands. So it's kind of like a wetlands exit to the, uh, Gulf of Mexico. Anyway, that's near there. We did not go there on that, this trip that I remember, but Scooter has been there a few times. Uh, though the last time you went, he said it was very windy and, uh, they, they, they quickly left. And now if Scooter, even if Scooter's without anybody, myself, even he will force his parents, uh, or talk them into it. Uh, like he could drive around looking for different places to, to access the Gulf of Mexico or other swimming regions or other bodies of water. And, uh, or, um, like places to swim. And then he likes to eat, you know, so he said, Oh, look at that shack. Let's eat at that beach shack there. So that's one thing. Now, this kind of goes along with it. Now, how do I explain this without, how do I explain other people being human without it being uh, judgmental? But so, Scooter has, okay, let's say it this way. Scooter has one vision. He likes that the, 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 there's different kind of styles of swimming in on the Gulf of Mexico in Florida. But he, he of course, pr pr prefers uh, a beach with uh, a, like some wave action and beach access for swimming because he says, you know, there's something about that, you know. And uh, he says, okay, so, you know, to do that, you got to travel a bit more down to, Tam you know, down Tampa Way or further south. And, and because he swam in those places, he knows, oh, okay, there's a pretty big difference between swimming on a Gulf beach and a more of a wetlands, he doesn't know what it's called, neither do I. So, but his, uh, w one of his family members, they're more, uh, they say, oh, if this is what the beach is like here, this is what it's like at every Gulf. Uh, the whole Gulf of Mexico is like it is at this one beach where close to where I live. And that's just how it is. Why would you go to another beach? Because it's going to be like this. And Scooter said, no, actually, this is different. Uh, the whole, the Gulf is not one thing. And they don't necessarily buy it. They say, no, 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 this is just what the Gulf is like. You're thinking of the ocean. He said, no, there's other styles of swimming you can do on the Gulf of Mexico. 
So they have a back and forth, but Scooter constantly, Scooter's like more of, uh, that person's like, well, why would we go, you know, that sounds like a lot. That person also occupies a lot of our brain, you know, even that person. They say, well, why would you go somewhere else? That involves, uh, you know, uncertainty. But when Scooter's in his adventure mode, his uncertain Scooter's gone. So he said, oh, well, we, we got to find a new place to swim. I'd like to find a new place to swim this trip. And then Scooter said that his mom was listening in a conversation of having one. I think having one. And she was getting her hair cut, I think. And they said that where she was getting a cut, they said, oh, well, there's a beach we all like to go to when we're off. Uh, and it's up Crystal River Way. And uh, I think they probably even said it or whatever. But it was kind of one of those things like, oh, up, up, you know, above Crystal River or something. And Scooter said, okay, we're going to find that beach. Uh, and also, Scooter is a little bit obsessed with cr- swimming in the Crystal River, though he has not done it because he can't find, uh, he hasn't, like, gone full bore. But even if he gets close to something called the Crystal River, you know, for him, that's a that's a win. And just driving around Florida somewhat aimlessly, even though he has a purpose. So Scooter tracked down what he thought was the beach they were talking about. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not 100% sure it was the beach they were talking about, but we, you know, we have no evidence to the contrary. But Scooter found it. He said, okay. And then he, he actually talked to his parents and they said, oh, well, we could stop uh, and eat on the way there. And I think they stopped in Crystal River, and they stopped. They, they said, well, there's this one place we used to like to go to, and then it changed hands. Let's go there. And that place was definitely having a little bit of, um, you know, the, 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 the short staffing was impacting that place. So we won't talk about it or where we ate or anything. Other than to say that Scooter was not, he ordered an unsweetened iced tea and he got a sweet tea. And then he said, holy mackerel, these are, he got like, uh, he didn't say that. He just said it to me. So we continued our drive north. And again, this is exciting stuff, especially because Scooter said, I don't think we've driven north to Crystal River on some of these roads. And so you get to see kind of some of the commercial things and then you get off. And I think it was quite a drive uh, through the wetlands to get from this road to where the beach was. And that was exciting because, you know, you're passing different like seafood restaurants that are on these different waterways, these wetland waterways or springs. We don't even know. And you're driving, and then you're driving on one of those roads that's just, uh, you know, where, where swampy water's on both sides, and you can see the ocean in the distance, or the gulf in this case. And then even on our right-hand side, you got to see some uh, power production facilities, and that was exciting just because I think one of them, like there was a lot of going on there on a grand scale because we think one of them was either getting built or, or taken apart. And it was just really cool because it was far enough away. It just looked, it was a contrast, right? It was these big power production facilities uh, and everything else was wetlands and uh, uh, golf. But also interesting, you know, and then we drove all the way out there and we got there out there and there's just like a small parking lot and there's a boat launch and parking and then, you know, two kind of beachy restrooms and a beach. Now, again, this was a very, this day and the time of day we got there, not ideal for beaching or swimming. It was very windy uh, so like too, too windy to enjoy yourself. And also again, similar to the similar, no, not similar, like in a different way, this was a different swimming conditions. And again, in Scooter's book, not ideal because this area was also at the edge of a wetlands. And I think a different flow pattern than this other beach we were talking about. So this one had a very vegetal floor. Uh, instead of beach sand. And again, that's not exactly Scooter's cup of tea. Not everybody's cup of tea there. And because of the wind, it was the, there was a lot of chop. Uh, 
and murk. So it just wasn't like a perfect swimming thing. And then, of course, if you have two other adults waiting for you to go swimming, uh, that was another thing. So we didn't do too much swimming, but Scooter got in there, got under the water. He said, it was. He said, oh, boy, is this salty. Good to be back in the Gulf. You know, I got in there. His, you know, his young one got in there. And it was great to be in that salt uh, and to get some golf in. Just like getting in the spring, you, you know, you say, oh, boy, this is the Gulf of Mexico we're swimming in now. You can't beat this. Even though Scooter said, well, you know, this is a little bit different in not ideal conditions. We said, yes, you're right, you're right. So we swam there. Then there's a little nature walk uh, that we did with a, like a boardwalk through the nature. And then it go, goes out on the water. I think for, I don't know if it was for fishing. I don't remember if we saw any people fishing. And we did that, and we took a picture at the boat launch with the power plant behind us. Uh, because actually, it's just funny that it's a similar style power plant to where on um, Lake Ontario, where Scooter likes to go. And so we enjoyed our time swimming. Well, we, we swam there, and we enjoyed the salty. We enjoyed reconnecting with the Gulf of Mexico. And then there was one other place that Scooter likes to go. Uh, now, these weren't the same days. I, I don't want to give you that impression. But there's another place Scooter likes to go right by where his parents say. Now, I wouldn't say he loves it, but he always goes swimming there. Uh, and that place is called Sun West, uh, and it has a name because it's, uh, it's interesting. And, and again, I, I don't even know the facts. I only know what I've heard from Scooter's family. But so ever since we visited his parents where they live in uh, Florida, they always say, Scooter's, you know, this is one of the major conversations. Where can Scooter go swimming that's not a swimming pool? Going in a swimming pool is okay, but where can we drive, eat lunch, and swim? And they say, oh, well, Sun West. Uh, and they say, oh, it's interesting because it was like when that plat oil platform leaked a bunch of stuff, uh, you know, some of the money got used to build Sun West. That's what the story goes. Now, I don't know if any of that's true, but it used to be a mine. Now, not an underground one, I think, like just a big open pit type mine. Because next door is still an active one that Scooter actually, like, uh, when we wanted to drive by and, and try to look over the edge. So don't do any of that. Not that he did it in any way that was irresponsible, but that's, you know, I said, Scooter, why you got to do that? And he said, well, you're allowed to. But so to us, it's interesting because you say, okay, this is interesting. It's um, a mine. And Scooter said, maybe it's like, I wonder how far down it goes. But more recently, we learned, well, Scooter said, where's the water come from? So what they did, at least, uh, again, not based on any research, is they built a beach. And there's some sort of um, uh, entry to the water uh, that uh, I, I think it's just like a concrete, like, uh, like swimming area. So that's got a concrete and sandy floor that ends at a rope and things. And you're not allowed to go beyond there. But Scooter says, I wonder what happens after that. Like, is that the mine? It does go down like 100 feet. Uh, but he's not allowed to find out. So that kind of titillates him. But also the water apparently is from a spring that is there. So I don't know if like when they were using the mine, if they were pumping the water out or like they just redirected the spring there. And it's like a slightly brackish uh at least my my memory, I'm I'm not 100% positive, but, you know, not a salt water, but not a fresh water is what it feels like. And that is nice on the skin. And it doesn't get very deep there, but it has a very nice beach. And this time again, I think it was also windy, but it was still good for swimming. Because this is more of your relaxed swimming. You know, there's no waves just more of hopping in, a bit like a pool. And uh, Scooter said the water's nice. There's a lot of people, you know, keeping an eye on everything so that everybody can swim without worrying. 
They do have an office, that's, but they don't have a food stand. And then they also, people do wakeboarding, one of those automated wakeboarding things. And there's also like an inflatables uh, water adventure thing. But we've never done either one of those. But we, you can watch people enjoying that. And so that was pleasurable. And Scooter always, we always go there, I guess because he knows it. Also on the drive there... There's a couple, there's another park, uh, Scooter likes to go to that he just discovered two trips ago and he tried to record it. And it's just like a place where you could go hiking and he tells his father, go there and go hiking. It'll relax you. And then actually you, you, Scooter thinks that you could walk that all the way through to the Gulf uh, or to the wetlands next attached to the Gulf. And then there's also on that side of the Gulf, I don't know any of the name. Oh, no, Linda Peterson Park. I think it's the name of the park we're thinking of. Now, we did not swim there, uh, but there's like this Linda Peterson Park that I think at one point had swimming. And Scooter says he may have swam there when they had swimming with his brother. But they have restrooms. They have like an accessible kayak place because Scooter's father was always like, well, we could get your mother in a kayak. He says, well, there's an excessive kayak place, accessible kayak place there. But this was just an interesting time, you know, when not a lot of stuff was running. So the beach was closed there. And uh, so we didn't see anything. And then there's like a like an observation tower. We went up there. We looked around. Then across the road is a, a boat launch and more places you can hike. We didn't go there this time. And that place also has a lot of picnic pavilions. And so people in the area have probably been there for a picnic before. So that's just a little bit about it. But let me look up some facts here. Okay, so let's start with Wikiwachi, Florida. It's a city in Hernando County. I feel like I've read this on the show before, maybe for uh, some other facts or something. But it has uh, manatee watching, mermaid costume shows, water rides. It was uh, the city of Wikiwatch was founded it to promote the mermaid attraction in 1966. 15 residents. Uh, then they got rid of the city. Sponsored a bill to dissolve the city. Okay, so I don't know any about that. Uh, so this is just about the city. Let's look up Wikiwachi Springs. Wikiwachi Springs is a tourist attraction, underwater mermaid performances, Buccaneer Bay. Wikiwachi uh, is from Seminole, which means a little spring of winding river. Now, the attraction, according to Wikipedia, was started in 1947 uh, by Newt Perry, who was showing off, hey, how I can breathe underwater with this thing. 18-seat theater, then, uh, like, it expanded to 50. Embedded in the lime rock of the spring with viewing windows uh, below the surface of the water. And they did different shows. Uh, the, they even premiered a movie with, uh, Don Knotts. Guests have included Elvis, Don Knotts, Esther Williams, Arthur Godfrey, Kevin Smith, Larry the Cable Guy. And it's been in different movies. The filming of Sunshine State, really? Interesting. Supergrass performed the video, uh, for 2005 there. And, yeah, scenes from Kelly Clarkson include the mermaids of Wikiwachi Springs. So that's interesting stuff. Uh, let's see if we have the Wikiwachi River, though. Wikiwachi uh, River. Okay, so Wikiwachi River is a river in Hernando County. It goes westward from Wikiwachi to the Gulf of Mexico in the Wikiwachi Estuary. Uh, it's best known for its spring and the attraction. Uh, the spring is a surfacing point for an underground river, deepest naturally occurring spring in the United States. So I knew we had looked that up. Uh, okay, so we have wikiwatchy.com. That's their website. It has all the parks and attractions. I don't know if it has any uh, history, though, more than we... 
uh, wiki watch you plan so you could use that website to plan your visit then florida state uh mermaid shows are at 11 a.m and 3 p.m first come first serve uh hours 9 to 5 30 uh, step back in time and enjoy a quintessential old Florida. Also has abundant protect, protected uh, wildlife. You can splash. You can take a kayak trip. Uh, see a show. Sit and spl- slip, splish and splash at Buccaneer Bay. So beautiful. Uh, highly recommended. And then AnandoCounty.us. I think this might be... Well, there's nothing here, Scooter. I think that one was just the uh, park that I was talking about. Here's the Linda Peterson Park. Linda Peterson Park is open from 8 a.m. to sunset. Uh, and not, I, I don't, I'm having trouble with some of these addresses. So it says it's at Shoreline Boulevard, 6300. Uh, 110 acres of open space. Uh, oh, also connected to Jenkins Creek Park across the street. So that's the other park Scooter was talking about. 40-foot observation tower, panoramic view of the march, and a look over Gulf of Mexico. Also, to the other directions, trees, trees, trees. Sit on a bank where you can fish while kids play on the playground. Oh, so you used to be able to swim there, I think. Uh, If you're looking for a great place for a family reunion, check it out. And that one is, uh, what do we call that there? That was... uh, Linda, Linda Peterson Park. Now, the place we went swimming is uh, Fort Island Beach. And let's see, we have Discover Crystal River, Florida here. Fort Island Gulf Beach includes a sandy beach, a fishing and sightseeing pier, a boardwalk connecting the beach and the pier, and a boat ramp, just like we said, uh, bathrooms, outdoor showers, covered picnic tables, and a grassy area. The Citrus County Boat ramp is here for free. And that's at uh, 1600 or 16,000 West Ford Island Trail. Let's just look at Crystal River's uh, things to do. They have water adventures, outdoor adventures, festivals, uh, the warm sp- So the scooter wants to do a spring tour. That's what he had heard someone saying at Buccaneer Bay. They said, oh, this is our last spring that we're swimming in. And we've been doing a spring tour. So that's on his list is like, wait a second, uh, how many springs can I swim in in Florida near my parents' house? So let's see, Ford Island Beach, uh, Citrus County. So maybe this is Citrus County, citrusbocc.com. Ford Island, Ford. Fort Island Gulf Beach, uh, family-friendly, white sand, restrooms, ample parking. Dolphins are also often seen swimming in the Gulf waters. So, yeah, that's all on there. Scooter did print out a map, or he has a map, because he said, Scoot, Ray? You're always good. Yeah, so let's see how we got there. We took 98 to Crystal. Oh, no, maybe we didn't eat at Crystal River. But, uh... I don't know, Scooter. I remember passing this Home Depot. But see, you take 44 all the way out there. I mean, this is definitely the one we took out there because uh, to Fort Island. Oh, here's another one, Scooter, that's way out there. Have you ever been to this one? Or or, or Zello State Community Park and Marsh Walk. That's quite far out there. He's not been out there. No, so here's where Homo Sauce is where we had lunch, Scooter, I think. Uh, not a. Okay, yeah, you're probably right, Ray. He said uh, probably did have lunch in Homo Sauce and not Cr- Crystal River. Homo Sauce Springs has a, a park there with a kind of a zoo, so Scooter doesn't go there as much. But if you like zoos, Homo Sauce, uh, uh, it's the uh, Ellie Schiller Homo Sauce Springs uh, Wildlife State Park. And we've also checked out the ruins of the sugar mill. That's all at Homo Sosa on one side of the Homo Sosa River, which probably is a spring that Scooter could swim in. 
And when you look at this map, you really see how beautiful it is, the wetlands and the marshes. Holy mackerel. Uh, there's seven sister springs, Scooter. Maybe you could swim at that. This is all on 19. And that turns into 98, uh, which you take north. Uh, and you could stay north on 98 all the way. And then it becomes 19 again, then 98 again. Um, you know, all the way up to the panhandle there. But eventually, you could turn to Gainesville or Carla. So, yeah, there's some interesting stuff about, uh, you know, about uh, where we saw. Oh, Scooter said, don't forget about Sun West. Okay, so this is from naturecoaster.com. Sun West Park Adventures Now and Then. This is by Barrett Hardy. It was posted May 6, 2020. We'll paraphrase. When you have lived in a place your whole life, it can be fascinating to look at the, and distressing to look at the changes. Uh, this person came to Spring Hill in uh, 1986. Talks about the high schools, the publics, but how stuff uh, changed since then. But one of the main interesting is that in the North Coast region is uh, the transformation of old Lime Rock Mine to a bathing beach and water park. What was one no once known as SunWest Mines is now the beaches at SunWest, 70-acre water park. They acquired the land. Pasco County got the land in 2006 after getting, you know, dealing with the company that owned it. And then in 2011, they leased it to a private enterprise, uh, opened in 2015. So I think we went there right when it opened. Uh, there's been some hiccups in the management of the park, uh, and, you know, they've tried to figure that out. Uh, but despite that, uh, and Mother Nature's, Nature's relentless churning, what exists today uh, provides local families with a fun place to spend the day. And it's five dollars to park. Uh, there's paddle boarding, kayaks, obstacle course, uh, magical memories of the Sun West mine. Uh, there's uh, this person talks about uh, Norfleet's General Store, uh, the Arapika Post Office. So these are other historical things you could check out. Uh, and fishing and swimming there when they were younger. I don't see anything about uh, sheep's head fish. Uh, oh, so it looks like it was already filled up with water before it. Uh, so maybe the spring just filled it up. I don't know. But it's interesting and a great place to swim. Some great places to swim in Florida. Gulf of Mexico, uh, SunWest, and uh, Wikiwachi. Uh, good night, everybody. All right, I want to thank everybody who became a patron recently. I want to thank Jillian, Raylani, and Thomas. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Molly, Ryan, and Robin. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Garrett, Marcus, and Ava. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Sarah, Jane, and Kathy. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Catherine, Deborah, and Wisdom. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Sarah, Lucy, and Laura, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Denise, Max, and Elliot, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Justin, Katie, and Tanya, thanks, thanks, and good night. Stacy, Amy, and Paradigm, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Thomas, Dakota, and Eliza, thanks, thanks, and good night. Kathleen, Hazel, and Pay, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Candice, and Kegs, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. And Lauren, and Sophie. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, thanks to uh, everybody who supports the show on Patreon, who supports our sponsors. That's how we're able to be here for you for free twice a week. We grow as a podcast by people spreading the word and by the people uh, who um, uh, just spread the word about podcasts in general. Like just by spreading the word about podcasts, you can help the show. And, uh, yeah, let me tuck in here. Like, uh, thanks to these tuck you in sponsors. I think right when I'm recording, this is 405 episodes in the podcast feed for free. Thanks, uh, everybody, and good night. Hey, everybody, this is Scoots with, uh, like, a tuck you in uh, message here for our Bedtime Story podcast. Uh, we're trying out uh, 
And I kind of said this, you know, free way to support Sleep With Me and bedtime stories from Sleep With Me is join our referral program, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer, R-E-F-E-R. You get rewarded for introducing people to free version of Sleep With Me, including access to Sleep With Me Plus. Uh, but the, most of all, just think about what your favorite podcast is or one of your favorite podcasts uh, and then support that podcast. It doesn't have to be Sleep With Me, but just to support your favorite podcast uh, because they could use your support right now. Uh, and if you decide, oh, Sleep With Me is actually my favorite podcast, well, then, wow, uh, I'm blushing, seriously, uh, even though it's imaginary here in this context, and support it at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus or listen to a show you love and, and see how they want to be supported. Thanks.